Okay, this is the uh, TCU TV Alienation episode. We got Rob and Zach from Alienation here. Uh, Rob, you want to show us this new product that you guys are unveiling? So this is a, the tubeless uh, system that we have. It's a TCS, which is a tubeless compatible system. Basically, it's the rim and tire uh, system that has to work together for tubeless. Um, we, we, we're not necessarily unveiling it. We've been showing it for a few years now. It's been three years in the development stage, but we haven't quite mastered it. First, we started off with a conventional tire. We had it holding, but then it would seep out. So <clears throat> kind of throughout the, the years and, and so forth, and, and Zach's developed it. And now we've got it to the point where it, it's 100%. It works. It's been tested. And uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to throw it into the race circuit first because those guys are the weight weenies. Those are the guys are the ones that, you know, 240 grams of rotating mass is going to be peeled off right away just by losing the tube. Um, so it's going to be more beneficial for them in the competitive side. Um, but there's also some huge benefits for bringing it into the street side, which we're going to, right now we've got it on a, a 185 tire mm -hmm. on our graffiti. We're going to put it onto, we're developing some tires. We're going to do a 2.3 for street. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> the idea of having it is basically we want to make it as easy, as, as, without changing it so much because it's tubeless, we want to keep it the same as if it was to, you were going to run a conventional tube and tire on anyways. Mm -hmm. The idea is pumping it up the same way, put your tire on the same way. The difference is you take the tube out or you don't take the tube out. You can do it either way. Mm -hmm. If you want to run this rim, because this is our malice rim, and it's, uh, it's 330 grams? It's 325. 325 grams. So light rim anyways. If you just want to run a light rim, you can put a conventional tube and tire on here mm -hmm. if you choose. If you want to run it tubeless, you have to use the tire also because the way the bead sits in there, it's kind of like a safety Yeah, tell seat. me a little bit about how that works because I know that was the big issue you guys had. Yeah, what that is is uh, we went ahead and we created this. That's essentially a, it's a 90 degree radius, the way it sits. Uh, and it has a little bump, since we call it international bead seat. What it does is on a traditional rim, you have like a 10 degree radius. There's nothing really to hold it there. Our concept is it'll sit there. That way it doesn't burp. It doesn't get right. pushed down. If it's sitting up on that, you know, on that radius, on that channel right there, I think that's the beneficial aspect. A lot of people have dealt with, you know, gettle tubeless or something. You do a flare or something, you catch me, it's boom, it just shoots out. Right. This one won't. It won't. No. Okay. L let's do some devil advocate stuff here. I mean, the first thing that I thought was, I ride over a piece of glass, I case on some some coping or whatever. What happens? If you ride over a piece of glass that's big enough to tear the tire, mm -hmm. it's going to tear the tire. Right. Um, as a backup, but it would street, tear the tire anyway. It, it would tear the tire anyways, exactly. Excuse me. Um, if it was a puncture, say a little piece of sliver of a glass, or if you're riding trails, a thorn, you can choose to put a lubricant in there, which we recommend if you're going to run a tubeless anyways. Now, the lubricant, basically, it's a no seal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, it's a liquid that you put in about two ounces. Okay. And as it's rotating, and you get a puncture in it, which we'll demonstrate that in, in a minute here, it will reseal itself. You wouldn't even know. Benefit of that is if you're uh, if you're out filming, is you're not going to have to stop, change your tube out, so forth. Um, you could carry a tube in your bag if you wanted to, and if that's the case, you get a, a tear in it. You want to patch it and put a tube in there. You can. Um, so that's kind of the benefit of it. It seals up to a quarter inch. It's essentially liquid latex with a kind of a, a micro grain, if you will. That's what actually you know says is that you know you catch something or something as it gets pushed out, it'll catch it, seal it, and you can continue to ride. It, you probably wouldn't even notice. Right. Um, and so then, this, is, this has been done for years in mountain bikes and road bikes, but you guys face some unique challenges because there's a lot of sideways momentum when you are spinning or doing whatever on a BMX bike, and, and this is the, the solution to that was having it lock in to the side, and you guys are actually able to patent that? You know what, it's not actually, we haven't patented it yet, you know, we were, I think, investigating the opportunity to patent it. Um, the interesting aspect for us is, well, let's say somebody attempts to try it, I mean, and there will be people that copy it. They're going to have to figure out a lot of dynamics. Uh, there is, as I said, you know, the, sh the internal shape is pretty, uh, that's pretty particular and it's pretty key. Uh, then the bead itself is a different shape than, say, traditional shapes. It has a different inner bead diameter. There are some real dynamics that they would have to figure out. Um, you know, as Rob said, you can use it as, you know, you can run a conventional tire on the wheel if you choose, or, you know, you can run that TCS tire on a conventional wheel. Uh, we wanted something that was interchangeable, but in order to have it work as a system, you have to mate the two. Mm -hmm. um, and so the weight, again, is, what's the total weight that you could expect to lose if you run it front and back? I would say, uh, you know, be between the rim and the tube loss itself, plus the low weight on the tire, if you've got you know, just a killer setup, 
specifically like let's just use rice as an example but even on street you probably lose minimum half pound upwards of a pound that's rotating mass yeah that's that's big yeah it's mm -hmm. huge I know like people aren't really super weight obsessed like they once were, but yeah, I can't help but think a lot of people are going to be pretty interested in saving a pound of their wheels. You know what well, I definitely, go ahead. especially when we're not, uh, we're not taking away from the strength, the integrity at all. Right. So you still have the same strength, you just lighten it up a little bit. I think bit. that's the beauty of it. It's, uh, you know, I tell people it's lighter, it's safer because it's not going to burp, it's not going to roll off. Uh, you can use it as, you know, it builds conventional, that's the great thing. You, you got a great set of hubs and you don't want to buy hubs, you don't have to buy my hubs. Just buy the hoop and buy the you know right. the tire you can set up, and it's more reliable. The other thing is, I think it, it ride gear rests are so much better. It's more supple. You don't have that tire and tube chafing. It does have a different feel. To oh, it does, man. It, it's I don't want to say it's floating on air, but it's it's like it next to really yeah, yeah. Pretty interesting. Um, what are the, what are the other concerns that you guys think that you're going to be getting from somebody who's watching this? I'm, I'm trying to think all the the, the hate comments in advance so that we can try to <laughs> guess. Be, uh, it's going to be hate comments. I think it's going to be more of a trust issue at first. Mm -hmm. I think people are going to say, "Well, I'm not going to trust it," and so forth, which is understandable. I yeah. mean, look, we're going to put it into race first off, and uh, it, we already trust it. It's been tested and everything. It works fine, um, but it is being you know being X. People are afraid of change and so forth, but. <clears throat> If you try it and you like it, use it. If you don't, I mean, the proof's don't. in the pudding. You know, if, if it comes out and it works, yeah. it's going to be hard to ignore. From my point of view, I think it's uh, it's kind of a twofold situation. I think one is, you know, you see it, it's hard to believe. It almost looks like magic. It looks like somebody's just kind of you know, screwing with you. You know, it's right. like nah, you, know, you just punctured it and it sealed itself. Um, I think the other thing is, you know, it's the setup. It's it's a little bit more tedious yeah. than a traditional setup. It's, you know. Because, you know, we'll demo this in a moment, you know, we'll show you how to put the tape on and such. It's just a little bit more time consuming. It takes about eight minutes. You know, a normal tire, you can probably put it on about 30 seconds. Right. Yeah. It's, it's a little bit more work. It's it's more is a little, little more yeah. work. But, but there's a million kids out there that are working on their bikes every day, yeah. you know. So to them, I can see it being appealing uh, big time. You know, one thing that I wanted to mention is it actually retains air longer. Right. You know, tires and tubes are, you know, they're so porous that they just bleed air. With this liquid latex, you can imagine, it's liquid, it's getting in, it's finding all those pores, it's sealing it up. Right. It holds longer. That's pretty cool. Uh, what's up with the valve situation? I you know, know, that's one thing. Let me show you, the, you know, on this valve, what we did was, um, like, what was accessible to us was a Schrader, or excuse me, a press yeah. valve. We wanted a Schrader, but, you know, it wasn't available and the tooling's going to cost quite a bit. We probably will eventually offer it, but what we did was, we actually put in a, uh, it's a removable core. Mm -hmm. So, you don't, you know, with the, with, with this goo here, it's actually, you know, it's easy to just put it in, you know, just... Yeah, oh, you put it in through there when yeah, it's yeah. already... Oh, yeah, yeah. You don't have to, tire you have to yeah. take the tire off. You know, yeah. and here's the thing. So, you know, we recommend that depending on the conditions, uh, maybe hot conditions, cold conditions, you might want to change it out every six months. You don't even have to change it out. You just open it up, put more in. Right, right. Um, before we get into the demo, what's the price point like? So, price-wise, it's... Um, you know, the rim costs about $5 more, so let's just say an average rim is, say, $60. It's going to be about $65. Uh, you know, the tape, nearly the same cost as a normal strip, but you got to buy it in bulk because you can actually, the roll of tape actually will roll five, uh, five rims. That way, if you happen to make a mistake, you have plenty of it. Um, really, your cost is in, in the fluid. You know, you're not putting a tube in, so you're not paying five bucks, but you're paying fifteen for that. Okay, but that so could probably last you. You this could probably last you a whole year. <laughs> right. You, you want a shot of one ounce and one ounce every six months. You're good. Yeah. If you, the, the more you put in, the better it's going to seal. Mm -hmm. But you're adding weight. Right. A little, little tiny bit. Yeah. All right. Well, do you guys want to get into this uh, demo? Because I'm pretty interested to yeah, see absolutely. it. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, uh, let me grab that. Uh, grab that ring. Why don't you move that over? Actually, you hand me the tools. What I recommend to uh, anyone when they're doing the uh, install, if you can, hand me the rim. Yeah. Any, are you guys going to be selling this all as like a bundle, so uh, the, with the, the goo and everything all together? Yeah, so on the website right now, we have everything individually listed. Uh, you know, we don't have, uh, I didn't list any pricing yet. Um, I, I would say probably in the next few months we'll probably start getting that out there. Um, what we're doing right now is a lot of beta testing with a lot of pro riders, we're trying to get their feedback, trying to get some sense of, hey, what works, what doesn't work, what we can make easier. So you've actually got the race team on the track. Oh, yeah. So, you know, like like pro-wise, I mean, we, we just sent out the samples. Like, just recently, I just sent samples like Mikey Day, you know, Corbin Schraub, Tommy Zula, Gary Knowles. Um, right. Like, uh, it's just about anyone that we pay or, or we flow on the race side is getting sets. Yeah. And here's the thing. I mean, if a street guy wanted, you know, I told Rob, why don't we get a couple to the street guys? Yeah, they're 1.85s, but you know what? 
Just test them. Yeah, Take them out for a day, riding on it. And we, we rate this one at 80 PSI. The Rob was mentioning the 2.3, that would be rated at 110 PSI. And then that'll be on our Fallon rim, which is a wider rim, it's 34 wide. Okay. So. When do you guys expect that you're gonna have the street size tires available? That's a good question. It'd probably sometime, honestly, June. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a, a reasonable launch date. Yeah. And I mean, there's guys out there running skin tire stuff. Uh, some do, you know, it's just, uh, it's preference, you know? Yeah. Um, if nothing else, like you want a really light rim. Yeah. You know, and, and you can have it essentially ready for when that tire launches. Right. You know, so so it's it's pretty simplistic. Uh, you know, the, the key about this is basically pulling it really tight. You don't want to leave any bubbles in it, so you just want to pull it exceptionally tight. A lot of the kids at home aren't going to have the same form strength you do, but. Probably not. Right. But they will make it. Yeah. Just double it up. Tape it. Push it down. It's nice and clean. Find your valve. Yeah, I recommend an awl or a rat tail file or something. Just put it in. Get a nice little clean hole in there. Yeah. Push your valve through. Lock it down. You'll feel it bottom out. The uh, the valve hole, that's another thing. The valve hole is a special hole. It has two special diameters for it to fit in so the unit can uh, recess itself. Okay. Nice airtight. Right there, it's bottomed out. Take your uh, baby tire. It's a little harder to get on because that bead has to fit in there really tight. Yep. So let's see if I don't look like an idiot and get this thing out here. We all have the tri Alex triple walls <laughs> just a couple of years ago. Oh, yeah. so. This one you have to really muscle on. The thing is, you don't want to use a, a, a tool. If you use a tool, you probably will, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 exactly. So, get that or it's probably the hardest part about it. Let's get it on. What you want it to do is that uh, that chamfer that's built, you know, that chamfer that's built in there. Right. You want that tire to sit nice and tight in there. That way, when the air comes up, it doesn't flow out. Okay. It's pushing up. It's you know it's gonna inflate that bladder. You know most kids won't remember this, but the TCS tires have passed. You know, or the tubeless, you know, the UST type tires, and you need tools that big to get them on. Right. I mean, you saw I just put that on by hand. It took a little bit, but it wasn't too bad. So the idea is now. Need a tube. Sorry about that. Get that pump over there. So I'm just going to go ahead and pump it up. If you want to get it to seat, it's going to make a noise. Right. Um, oh, so you can feel it clicking in? Yeah, you can get to about 40 psi and hear it pop, pop. And that's it seating itself. That and this is safe uh, for any psi or relative yeah. speeding? Yep. So you saw it just jumped right up. We want kids to be able to be able to, you know, use this right there in their garage. They don't need a compressor. Right. You know. The idea is once we get it to seat up on top of the channel, you know, into that channel, it's about ready to, you know, you'll hear that noise in a sec here. Hear it kind of creeping its way. Yeah, there, oh, yeah. there. Oh, there you go. What, what PSI are we there? We're about 60 PSI right there. Okay. 
So I'm going to go ahead and just take that out. Make sure it's fully seated. When I was telling you it was safer, if you look at the bead line, the safety line, yeah. it's real equal. You know, a lot of times, you know, you have that radius, the tires kind of look kind of funny. Yeah. I'm all out of breath and shit now. <laughs> That's all good. <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and this out. <clears throat> Show how it feels out. Oh, so you get it in there and take the air so, out? Yeah, so once, okay, yeah, so once it's, you know, once it's fully seated, yeah. now I'm just going to pull the valve out, you know, completely. Got all up there. Just shake this stuff up really good. Like I said, we're going to sell these things in uh, two ounce shots. Right. It's already fully set up for you. Just put it all in. Show in. You put the valve back in. Go ahead and. Uh, it's got a little taper on that right there. Just tighten her down. I mean, I don't know what that is. That's probably what about five minutes probably took us to do that. Yeah, and you, you could theoretically run it without the, uh, the you, sealant in there. You, if you could, but oh, what, yeah. what you don't get is you don't get that protection that right. you know the, the, the puncture. Oh, yeah, yeah. puncture for yeah. basically. You could. Yeah. yeah. Here's the thing too, you do it your first time, you start to get, get it down, it's like swinging a guitar or something. Yeah, you know? yeah. And once you've done it the first time, or building anything with your bike, you build it and then you know kind of what the yeah. process is and then it's just second nature, you know? I'm just going to put 40 PSI in there for you. Just close it up, ready to ride. Wow, so like that. what you want to do is if you can, kind of move it around a little bit. Right, just so yeah, you just disperses the, the liquid. Yeah, well, the, can I see this one? Yeah, yeah, that's one we've got fully set up. Like I said, that one's about two pounds on that whole setup right now. One of the things I, I do like, oh, it is, it's incredibly light. Jesus. If you have a little extra fluid, maybe, um, if, you know, pull back, you know, just put a little bit around the you know the edges okay. of the bead and the you know on the, the actual uh, bead hook. That'll actually kind of help it seal a little bit faster too. If you want, I'll let Rob kind of demo the uh, our our stab poke test here. Yeah, yeah, let's see this. Yeah. So if you poke it and you don't spin it, mm -hmm. it'll it'll leak until yeah. it until it bubbles until up. It starts spinning. Okay. So you will lose more air. Uh -huh. If it's rotating, you don't need poke it. You don't even know. You don't know. Yeah. Because the fluid's going around with it. Okay. Um, so I'll poke it and I'll spin it. You might see some stuff spray out at first. Yeah. But then it's going to seal itself as okay. soon as it goes. So. That's it. That's it. So. <laughs> right. Now, <clears throat> we had this one over at the show and we poked it 30, 40 yeah. times. This is one real. Yeah. That, it's, that it's, tire's been poked 30, 40 30, times. 30, 40 flats like that. Yeah. This. If you look, I mean, it's you can see that you know it's about a quarter of an inch. That's pretty unbelievable. It's a slit. And here's the thing: it's it's actually it's and it's continuously safe to ride. Right. 